Hello and welcome to Spotlight by Amazing Workplaces. Spotlight puts into focus established names in the world of business, both leaders as well as entrepreneurs, to engage with them in conversations about how they impact the organizations as well as the community through their endeavors. Today, the Spotlight focuses on Nandini Iswar, CTO and co-founder of Speakfully. Nandini is responsible for the tech side of the organic and ever-evolving human-centric platform Speakfully to address workplace mistreatment, including retaliation, harassment, and microaggression. Known for humanizing tech solutions, Nandini is ensuring the success of the Speakfully mission by integrating social and emotional intelligence into the overall technical roadmap of the brand. Prior to joining Speakfully, Nandini headed the Assurance Software Engineering Department and also served as a technical advisor to companies globally. A passionate proponent of women in STEM, Nandini supports access to diverse talents while enabling women to grow and learn to their fullest potential. Today, Nandini joins us from San Francisco to speak to us on Spotlight. So let's welcome Nandini and learn more from her about what it takes to be a woman in STEM, what drives her purpose at Speakfully, and how she, along with Jana Moran, CEO and co-founder, Speakfully, are on a mission to create safer workplaces for women at large. So welcome Nandini to Spotlight. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us, you know, all the way from San Francisco, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Ekta. So nice to see you again. Um, thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. It's a pleasure for us also to have you on the, you know, on the Spotlight show. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks. So, uh, Nandini, you know, today, um, thanks for joining us today. We are going to actually talk about uh, your platform Speakfully and how it is helping women all across the globe, making life for them easier, uh, especially in the workplaces, and uh, how you as a woman in STEM have made a place for yourself uh, you know, in this industry. So let's uh, start a conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, happy to, I'm really happy to be here. So uh, Nandini, while women make up 59% of the total workforce, they're averaging only 30% of the workforce across major tech companies. That 30% includes both tech and non-tech jobs like marketing and HR. When it comes to representation of women in tech jobs at tech companies, they can't seem to break even at even 20%. Um, I mean, uh, women, hold only 17% of the tech jobs at companies like Google, 15% at Facebook, and 10% at Twitter, you know, to just quote a few uh, figures, mm -hmm. recent figures. So how would you describe your foray into tech and your journey so far? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Ekta, for, you know, calling out some of those statistics. Um, it's, it's disappointing, right? I mean, when you think about it, uh, also as a woman, um, especially in the field of tech, it's very disappointing to see some of those statistics. Um, and, and I think I may have said this to you earlier in, in other conversations too, we've had a lot of promising initiatives that help you know, young girls getting into the field of tech, right? Uh, build the, building the interest you know, so, uh, early on, you know, girls who code, you know, um, there's so many, that's just one of the things that comes to mind, but there are so many organizations, nonprofits that are really like taking strides in, in you know, creating that interest um, in, in young girls. The challenge and the problem has always been growing and sustaining these technical jobs. Um, and there's lots of literature out there. There's lots of, you know, um, detailed statistics as to why that's the case, why that's not. I think in the end, it really just, if I have to simplify it and boil it down, it really just comes down to one issue of a very conscious gender bias that exists in, in workplaces. 
um, you know, some may argue that it's not as conscious as, as you know, I'm maybe calling it out to be, uh, but that exists. And, and I think um, now more than ever, especially in the last year and a half, now we're seeing that there are organizations, you know, workplaces that are thinking of it as a as a potential priority for them to really resolve and solve, right? Um, so that certainly will help. I do hope that you know those sort of initiatives can actually help organizations crack that you know those those bad numbers, and you suddenly start to close the gap there. Um, it's not easy um, to do what you know what we're asking, right? Uh, it requires a collective effort. My entry itself into the field of tech was, you know, at, at an early stage. I, you know, got into computer science and programming when I was in school. Um, I loved it. I, you know, I enjoyed the field, so I just grew with it, um, just for the sheer passion. Uh, but you know, as you get into the workforce, you start out at entry level jobs, and then you work yourself. You find your um, niche skill, and you grow through the ranks. But every time you grow through the rank, you kind of look around you. It starts to become more and more lonely, um, you know, within your peer group. As as a, as a woman, I'm saying. You know, so seeing other, you know, um, you know, there's more men, a majority men, you know, in your peer group, especially if you're growing through, you know, management and and what they call as a tech ladder. Um, so and um, the biggest issue, I still bring it down to like that very conscious gender bias that exists, you know, sometimes, um, you know, good male allies and also good leadership in companies, they want to do the right thing by, you know, um, increasing the representation. But sometimes even by doing so, if you don't do it in the right way, if you don't do it in a very authentic way, you can actually conform to that bias once again. And, you know, you might end up making the problem worse. So it not only depends on how you're um, you know, tackling it, but also it depends on the message that you're actually giving out when you're, when you're handling that uh, itself. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's disappointing statistics. I agree with you 100%. Thank you, Nandini. Thank you so much for you know explaining it so well and put, uh, you know, throwing light on such an important subject and a matter of discussion. Thank you so much. Uh, so, um, so uh, Nandini, uh, going by your personal experience, why do you feel women are poorly represented in the tech fields and how can we increase the representation of women in technology? So you've already mentioned, you know, about the gender bias and, uh, you know, what are the uh, basic problems? Can you just, you know, elaborate upon it? And also, you know, help us understand how we can increase the representation in this section. Yeah, yeah um, it's a really good question. Um, it has to be a very authentic, intentional effort on the part of an organization to, um, to help with increasing the representation. And like I was saying earlier, you have to do it in a way that you know, the message that you're actually giving out to a lot of the younger women who are still in the workforce, but who have essentially just joined at entry level roles, they're looking at this as an opportunity um, to see how they themselves can fit into the mold and actually grow. So you have to create a framework where if you're assessing somebody for growth in the, in the company, and I, and I say growth in a very broad sense, um, you know, when you're looking at assessing someone for growth, assess them also for the fact that they, you know, are they set up for success in the new role that you would bring them to? Um, you know, it's very natural. A lot of times people think of men who are showing potential, who they think naturally are, you know, somehow you gravitate towards some, a male who's showing potential to perform at a different level. And you want to actually just lure them into that role right away, because just because you're like, you know, highlighting that potential so much. Um, but somehow that same doesn't exist when you're assessing non-binary genders or even women, actually. So um, it's important to know that you have to you have to make the assessment in in you know in uniformity, right? It has to be equal. So if you judge one gender by potential, judge the other also by potential. 
Um, and once you bring them to the new role, it's not just about you know creating growth and creating representation, but it's also about how you're allowing them to be successful in that role. If you're going to cause you know all kinds of um, yeah, roadblocks for that person to be successful in their agenda, then you're essentially not really creating representation. And that would be more reason for people to just fall out. What are women going to do if they're going to have to like keep facing headwinds? They're just going to say at one point, you know what, I'm out of this organization and you lose it. So the battle actually gets worse at that point. Many organizations say, I want to create a diversity council or like a DNI co committee. And you want to make, you know, make one of their charters to increase the representation of women in different areas, right? In different areas of growth, in leadership roles, and so on. That in itself is not sufficient. Like, think about it. If you manage to identify good candidates for potential, you've you've assessed them for what they are and you bring them into a new role. How are, this, how are they going to make, be successful in that role? If they are going to be facing a lot of headwinds, if there's a lot of roadblocks, if there are a lot of roadblocks for them, then they're not going to be successful in that role. So always make sure that it is, you know, you're supporting and creating an allyship around everybody, because that's very important in making sure that they can function to their fullest potential. And when you have, when you put a woman in charge, I mean, we, we, you showed me some statistics early on, but there's so much statistics that, you know, that, that talks about how a diverse leadership group actually functions and creates a very good balance in a team when they're working on strategy and agendas. Um, boardroom conversations, you know, we, we experience that also. We see that a lot. Boardroom conversations, if it's very skewed towards male, then you have a very different play there. Maybe there's just, you know, um, yeah, you know, maybe I'll call it out. Maybe there's a lack of sensitivity to some extent. But the minute you actually bring in other genders into that mix, suddenly you're creating a very natural, unconscious set of balance that brings about in the in the boardroom. And I think, or in any leadership, you know, um, committee, I would say, you're essentially like functioning so much better. You've got more diverse ideas. You have more diverse perspectives. And all of that together can help you like look at the problem and say, let's, you know, let's increase representation. And you approach it very differently. So at the end of the day, when it is, um, when it's in turn for organizations and workplaces to help this cause and help increase the representation, they have to do two things. They have two responsibilities. One is very purposefully, but in a very authentic, intentional manner, help in making sure you create more representation in different roles. Maybe in the field of tech, that's more required than other fields, but also make sure that you're leveling the playing field. So you're bringing in more talent into these roles. And second thing is, more important to me is actually creating that role and creating the place so they can actually be successful and they can take off and grow from there. At every, at every stage, you have to you know, perform in a way and your actions actually need to speak louder than your words. So do it in a way that it's collective. Do it in a way where you're seeking out good opinions and you're collectively like coming up with, you know, good you know, healthy decisions for the company. So those would be my, you know, two pieces of advice. So uh, basically, you know, we have to uh, practice diversity and inclusion, especially with the focus on the female gender and uh, not just, you know, uh, the, the diversity part, but also the inclusivity part that you're talking about yeah. and the equity part. Yeah, so give them an equal playing field, right? Yes, yeah, an equal playing field. You have to be just about everything. I mean, look, look, at the end of the day, women are not asking to be considered, you know, superior to anything. You know, that's not, that's never been the fight and that's never really been the message all along for centuries now. Uh, but the message is that, you know, level the playing field, you know, like may, let's make sure there's equity across the board. Um, and, you know, whether it is gender-based, whether it's race-based, you know, and that's what, you know, that's what you do by creating like a very inclusive work environment. Um, and that, it's a win-win-win at the end of the day. You're, you're basically 
you know, improving your talent, your retention improves, your uh, collectively, you know, you've got a much happier and a very healthier um, uh, staff in your organization. Your employees are, their mental well being is very important to the success of the organization. Um, so, all of it, I think, in the end, you know, uh, there's, I don't see an alternative. You know, the alternative is a pretty grim picture. <laughs> Thank you, Nandini. Thank you for this uh, wonderful insight on the subject. So, Nandini, uh, tell me one thing. You became an entrepreneur, you know, after uh, your uh, long stint in the IT field. So, what inspired you, you know, actually to join Jana as a co-founder at Speakfully? Um, it you know, Jana herself, I think, I think, you know, I keep reflecting back on, on that moment. Um, it was, I, you know, I, I'll say the story, um, Jana and I, whenever we talk, we are always figuring out who's going to say the story, but uh, I'll say it since it's me here. She, um, Jana Morin was a person that unfortunately experienced a very negative environment when she was in the workplace right um and what did she do about it you know she she went through obviously a ton of you know a ton of trauma and it it you know it impacted her life in so many different ways um you know one that we cannot you know we cannot imagine or you can't you know you can't live with that but but what she did there was very inspiring it was very inspiring to me because she turned that around and she sort of reflected back on, on her journey, what, what happened to her. And she thought about what is it that she wished she had as an employee who was experiencing a level of mistreatment and what she wished, you know, more importantly, what she wished the other group, which was basically her leadership team and her um, people management team and HR team, what they had um, in order to like make this easier for her as the employee who was being mistreated. So that led to, you know, the thoughts of, you know, speakfully. So when I, you know, when I met her the first time and she shared, you know, her experience and her journey, it was very inspiring to me because it, at the end of the day, it's one simple thing. You take something that's, you know, a very negative experience, you kind of are bogged down by it. You can stay in that misery, you could deal with it that way, or you could turn it around and completely make it positive and make it such that someone else can also benefit from that experience, from your, from your wisdom and from you know, whatever you've learned through that experience. For me, it really just came down to that. We kind of hit it off right away. Um, and I, you know, like you were saying, I've been through the tech world. I've, you know, played leadership roles. I've dealt with a lot of, you know, male aggression. Um, and, and for me, I got to a place where I was very tired of it. And I didn't feel the need to deal with it. Um, and it, it coincided with the time that, you know, I had my, uh, my second child. And um, to me, at that point, the priority shifted and, and the purpose was about being a healthier and a happier working mom. And I didn't want to like, you know, compromise on, uh, you know, being with my children to go into a work environment where it was really just all about me trying to like fight and prove my way all the time. It didn't make sense at all. Um, so I took a pause. I took a pause at that point and I wanted to go back into the workforce, but I wanted to do it in a way that, uh, you know, what I was doing is going to be meaningful. It had to have a good mission behind it. Um, so I, where I could take my learnings and my experience, you know, in the tech field and kind of apply it towards a greater good. So it was, you know, um, it, it just, it just clicked and, you know, that's what inspired me and in so many ways. And we, you can see that, you know, and you can see that in our, in our product in Speakfully, how we've built it. It, it's a very sensitive experience when someone is, you know, being mistreated or someone's being, you know, has to navigate that, that whole journey. It is not easy. So our product tackles that with a lot of sensitivity, with a lot of, you know, I mean, with, with, with emotional intelligence. I, 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 you know, I like to keep saying that because if you're not sensitive and if you're not, if you don't have a high EQ when you're addressing a situation like that, 
then it's a lost cause. You're actually making it worse for the person who's experiencing it. So we know it firsthand through Jenna and you know through what she's experienced. So our product is all about creating that sensitivity and yet take good positive action. At the end of the day, it's how do you bridge the gap between between the employee and the leadership, because that's the ultimate goal. The goal is not to like, you know, shun one group or the other. The goal is to bring the groups together so you create a more positive uh, work environment and your culture is all about that mental well-being. Um, so that's the that's the goal. And I'm proud to say that our product like wears that emotion on the sleeve when when you when you use it. Thank you, Nandini. Uh, I think uh, I have you know uh, read a little about Janan's story, and I understand that she did go through you know a lot of uh, personal trauma at the workplace, and how you know you can turn a problem into a solution. Uh, Speakfully is a great example for that, and we'll come to you know uh, our next question where I would definitely you know like to ask you a little in detail about what Speakfully is all about so that our audience also come to know about this wonderful platform that you have built. Yeah. Uh, I love to talk about that. Um, so uh, Speakfully is basically a, a tech product. It's a, it's a solution, it's a platform um, that is ultimately expected to help people who are navigating mistreatment um, in, a, in a more constructive manner. And um, Speakfully is a product that you as, or as an organization, as like HR teams or like people leadership teams, you kind of deploy this product and offer it uh, to your employees. Employees have a way where they can go in there and it's very therapeutic for employees when they go in and have to you know, write about what experiences they're going through. Um, and keep in mind that when, when any employee is experiencing anything, whether it's positive or negative, um, everyone wants to deal with it in a very different way. So the Speakfully platform um, offers multiple channels and multiple ways for people to be forthcoming about you know, their experience, about the feedback that they want to give their leadership. It could be anything under the sun. So we've got you know, a very holistic, all-inclusive platform that tackles all of those angles. So if you are going through something, um, you're not sure if it's actually a good or a bad thing. Something happened, but it's left you feeling uneasy. It's very therapeutic to actually go into the platform and like quickly write it down and say, this is what happened, but these are the kind of things that I think may be red flags for me. It may not be a red flag for you right at the time that you're experiencing it, but maybe you leave it there, you save it, come back to it and look at it after a few days or it happened to you again, then you start to see a trend, right? And that allows you to really come forward and you know, come forward and share it with, with the leaders so they can actually take action. That's the intention. The leadership team, on the other hand, when you look at, a, when you talk to HR teams, you know, and we've spoken to so many wonderful leaders who really want to solve this problem. One of their biggest stumbling blocks is not knowing the full scope of detail of exactly what someone's going through and what exactly happened. So our platform allows for, um, ways that they will actually know and get all those details um, you know um, so they can essentially take action like what do you do i mean it's very frustrating for hr leaders if someone says you know what you know this happened to me in the hallway but i'm not going to tell you who did this and i cannot give you any more detail how do you solve it so i think the platform creates a ways that you know employers uh, and leaders can really communicate back and forth, whether it's anonymously or not anonymously, you communicate back and forth, make it very action oriented, get all the details, and you can manage and resolve the case through the product itself, take it through a nice workflow and understand what it is. The nice benefit about Speakfully is if you're, a, if you're an organization, you want to be able to manage the risk of having big problems, right? I mean, today we are in the day and age of, you know, people going out to media, people writing in blog posts, you know, and, and it, it creates a big organizational risk. So I think it's uh, the, you know, the USP of Speakfully is our data and analytics, you know, it's a very tech driven solution. It's very data driven. Um, 
HR leaders actually will have the ability to get some proactive analytics even before something's become a really big problem. So now suddenly, as, as you know, org leaders, you're now in front of the problem as opposed to you being very reactive to the situation. So those are the kind of ways that Speakfully can help companies create um, and, and bridge the gap, like I said, I like, like to keep saying that, and then, but that's the ultimate goal. The goal is, you know, you create a way, there are different channels for people to come forward and talk to each other, but the most important thing is that you do that. You don't want to just sit there in one corner and say, oh, leadership is doing this, or employees are doing this, but why not talk about it, come to the center, let's resolve it together. That's what we do. Right. That's what the platform's built to do. So basically, it kind of eliminates uh, the fear from the minds of the employees that yeah. firstly, it's uh, like you mentioned, it's anonymous. So if they, you know, that fear goes off that if I talk about the, you know, some person or some incident that happened with me, then I'll be, you know, kind of uh, uh, coming in the front and maybe it doesn't get resolved yeah. and I get into a problem. So yeah. that fear goes off basically and to feel um you know you know much more safer workplace they feel safer in the workplace yeah so yes it, it's all about the safety um at the end of the day um one of the biggest reasons that um you know mistreatment happens in the workplace is the fear of you know fear of retaliation and why does my why is mistreatment you know so prevalent in organizations it's because people aren't able to come forward and when and because they don't come forward leaders are not able to actually take action and do something about it you don't know what you don't know um so you know but what prevents people from coming forward it's again the retaliation the fear of retaliation being held you know responsible for something or fear of losing a job the fear i mean when you operate from a sense of fear you're not giving your job your fullest uh, attention right at the end of the day um so the it's about creating a very safe environment where employees feel safe that they're actually communicating in in a feel safe environment and you know the leaders are taking a very positive attitude towards it just by coming out imagine if you're an hr leader who is listening to this call you know hopefully you know when you're sitting there you're offering a product like this to your organization that itself is a huge message that you're giving to your team you're saying, listen, if you're experiencing something, we want you to tell us about it and be forthcoming. Right there, you've won like half the battle, just being able to deploy a tool like this. So it's about creating safety, creating confidence, building confidence. And you walk away saying, you know, when you say, I don't have any, uh, you know, bias or toxicity or any levels of mistreatment in my organization, you can be very data driven and informed about that through Speakfully because you'll get that insight in the data and analytics, as opposed to like not having something like this at all at the end of the day. You don't know what you don't know. True, true. Thank you, Nandini. I think, uh, you know, this is a very good platform for organizations to have. and. Uh, but uh, tell me one thing, Nandini, how does Speakfully work in a remote setup, especially in today's times when most of the people are working uh, remotely? And what are your future plans at Speakfully? Um, you know, it's remote. Um, you know, first of all, you know, we understand, you know, that now things are again in 2021 things are again shifting so now you you know earlier last year there was you know there was this big buzz about oh we're all you know being remote and you know initially we even heard a few organizations say that because we've gone um, entirely remote we don't really have um, instances of harassment or or discrimination um and what uh, you know, the stats are in front of us. It does not matter whether you're actually in a remote setting or you're in a physical office co-located or you're in a hybrid situation. This year, you know, we're hearing a lot of talks about being in a hybrid environment. Um, bottom line is, you know, there are you know, mistreatment like discrimination, 
uh, forms of harassment, forms of bias, they take its own uh, shape and form, and they have their own medium with, through which it actually comes across. It doesn't matter, you know, you may be sitting, you know, in physical proximity with somebody and experiencing a level of discomfort. That same level of discomfort can actually occur even when you're in a remote setting. And it won't be the same way. It will manifest itself in a different manner. Um, video calls, you know, you have big Zoom calls where you have like, you know, large team meetings. People may not have a voice in those meetings. They may be able to try to say, but someone else is constantly talking over them, you know, because they're purposely shutting someone out. They, they, people, when you put a bunch of people together, you have all kinds of behavior to deal with. So it happens in all shapes and form. And I think that's the thing that we all have to like completely accept right now. And other thing is, other aspect is when you're in a remote setting, somehow you have managed to bring your work into your home, you know? Um, people are taking calls from bedrooms. People are taking calls from, you know, um, from your living room. You've got kids running behind. You've got, you know, things that's going on. So suddenly now the two, areas have completely blended. So in, in those environments, in those settings also, you experience different forms of bias. Maybe someone's judging you because you're, you know, not turning your video on or because you're, you've got children running behind. It, it takes its own shape and form. Um, so our solution, you know, the Speakfully solution is meant to, at the end of the day, solve for anything, regardless of where it happens and how it happens. But just the fact that it can happen it's, uh, in itself is actually, um, you know, it, it sort of like creates that purpose for staying ahead of the problem and trying to solve it. Um, so the remote environment or even like a hybrid environment that can create even more confusion. Someone's in the office, maybe they're leaving behind the people who are at home. That is a sense of discrimination as well in its, in, you know, as you call it. So we don't want anyone, we don't want organizations to conform to those bias. We want them to be able to recognize those bias if it happens. And many times it's very unconscious. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that all the time people are malicious and wanting to coming in with the morning and saying, I am going to be different with this person. No one's doing that. You know, not, I hope not. But, you know, you have um, very unconscious ways of doing it. But, some, you know, when you call it out, when you let them know that, listen, you're, you know, discriminating against me, then right there, maybe there's an opportunity for them to get training and maybe there's an opportunity for them to learn and stop doing that. Um, so I think, um, you know, it, yeah, re remote or not, um, I think this is, um, this is certainly a platform that can help in all, in all ways. Right. And what are your future plans at Speakfully? So the future for Speakfully is, uh, is very exciting. You know, we have, uh, we have recognized that there are different ways that uh, employees like to come forward. Um, so certainly, you know, very um, modern mobile-based approach where people are actually, maybe they can get QR codes in organizations um, that we can actually put it up on your uh, walls or send out as uh, emails. And you just scan it and it gives you a way, a, a very unique place for you to actually go and, and document document and submit what you're going through. Um, it can be a very quick, easy, painless, completely anonymous platform. That is something that, uh, you know, we just recently launched um, as well. And we're looking to kind of, you know, grow that approach. Um, overall, you know, in the future of Speakfully is we're looking at it as a, um, as a very inclusive platform that can essentially integrate with a lot of other solutions um, and try to create it as a holistic approach towards solving um, you know, the, the workplace confidence, giving more ways for employees to speak up. And you know, for employers from, you know, from leadership side, they would actually find a lot of convenience in having multiple levels of integration. And that's kind of where we are growing. So um, it looks pretty bright for us. Okay, thank you, Nandini. Uh, I think it was a wonderful discussion that we had today. It was wonderful uh, oh, yeah. talking with you about the various aspects of STEM, women in STEM, and uh, you know the how women uh, participation in the organizations can increase, and how Speakfully helps in creating you know uh, more inclusive workplaces and gives a voice to the employees create helps organizations and 
increasing the level of confidence and trust and making them you know safer workplaces yeah, so you hit the nail on the head it's all about that trust and confidence thank you nandini thank you for sharing such valuable ideas with us i'm sure our viewers are going to really benefit from this discussion of ours thank you once again for being a part of spotlight have a great day thank you so much ekta it's been a pleasure and thank you for having me here i hope everyone enjoyed the conversation yes, i sure did same here i also enjoyed it thank you so much nandini thank you ekta Subscribe to our channel for latest updates on leadership interviews, webinars and educative videos related to human resources, learning and development, culture, employee engagement and many more. <laughs>